We're here up in Wisconsin, Great Lakes Dragway. This is the first weekend. We've actually had some kind of decent weather to be able to run. And we got Mikhail's car, and then we're gonna get this thing on the track. And we're gonna see if we can beat the previous best of a 962. It's been a it's been a while. Yeah, it has. You guys have been working on uh, some little special. I mean, this is pretty much yeah. R8 800. Yeah, AMS built motor, piston rod combo. Mm -hmm. Garrett 2860 turbos on it. These are the turbos off of Red Alpha. We just did the race exchanger and the auxiliary coolant pump upgrade because this car is a premium mm. and only the red sports came with the secondary intercooler pump. Oh. The second pump definitely works a lot. I don't know if you noticed, this is an a production piece. I think this was on Josh's car or it was on Red Alpha or something like uh, that. Okay. Because like clearly <laughs> it's a little, a little worn out. And the end tanks are hand fab, they're not billet end tanks. This car has been down for a little bit, so you were actually just recently deployed. Yeah. For six yeah. Months. So I before I deployed I shipped it to Jake for storage. He wanted to tinker with the car and you know make sure it's done right. <laughs> well we also didn't want it to be a shop car. Yep. So, so it's a garage it's a garage car. It's a garage car. It's built in a garage, yeah. We're actually going to be putting meth injection on the car. I'm going to try to make some more power in the at fueling. Yeah, well, I, we need a little bit more fuel. It's not a matter of like we can't run higher ethanol. It's I want to have extra fuel in reserve. I don't want to be pushing everything to the limit. And adding the meth injection, I'd like to have a little bit of extra cooling that we need when we're running these turbos at the max. There's obviously cars out there that are making damn near 900 or more horsepower. I don't think that, that we're going to need that kind of power. I don't think pushing it that hard is really going to be necessary to get the times that we're looking for out of the car. Uh, I think with a little bit of weight reduction and dialing in the launch control is going to be uh, where it's at. We're just excited to see what we can do with the car. That's why we're staying late after hours to work on it. I think Can't wait to see what happens, man. Hopefully maybe mid-9s at low 140s. That'd be crazy. Quickest Q50 in the world. What? 991. Dude. At 143 and a half. Congratulations, brother. That's insane. Yeah. Hell yeah, come here. Hell yeah, dude. Garage, Woo! Bro, right here. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Now we gotta like take it somewhere warm with the uh, like dude, prep. No, it's got Those more to turbos go. spooled up. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. I saw my dudes. I saw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my guys. What's going on? What tis up? Nothing too much. Intercooler testing. Just a little intercooler action. We are testing our new air to water intercoolers. Paul here is telling me we got two versions. Yes, we, have we have this version right here. And these right here. So quite a bit of testing that will be going on today.
Oh, is it hot? No, it's cold. Damn cold. Hey, new intercoolers, baby. <laughs> What's this weird wiring and sensors and things that can actually <laughs> prove or disprove the efficiency or viability of upgrading the intercoolers? Yeah. Standard AMS fashion. We are doing data collection on our products during development so we can see if there's a necessary change that needs to be made to validate the improvements that we projected. That's what you see here. You see these are uh, thermal couples. So they're, uh, these are actually quite fine. Thermal couples are really fast reacting. We have thermal couple on the hot side of the intercooler, on the cold side of the intercooler. We also have thermal couples going into the water that were flowing in and out of the intercooler. We also have air pressure in and out of the intercooler. So not only can we measure the efficiency of the core and validate the improvement over the factory core as far as temperature wise, we can make sure that we're not incurring a pressure drop across the core, i.e. more restrictive. We ran the car with the stock intercoolers and all the thermocouples and pressure sensors on it to get a baseline. We use the baseline to compare to our intercooler. The data proves that these are working exceptionally well. I was expecting an improvement, but not as good as what I am seeing in the data. On face value, it's a massive improvement. You want to be able to show the end user what they're buying. Hmm. You're not just buying a shiny billet part. So we're running uh, 26 and a half pounds of boost. I'm not running the car at full tilt because I'm running the car under load for 17 seconds, uh, which should be longer than anybody should be doing with minimal airflow. Yeah. And uh, just in order to 100% validate that no matter what you do with these intercoolers on the car, that you're not gonna run into heat soak or the heat issue in general. Unfortunately with, you know, lower quality cores that you can see on the market, um, not platform specific to Q50, but just lower quality cores, you will see an increase in thermal capacity. So it'll take longer for the air temp to come up because you're trying to heat up a big mass of aluminum. Mm. But their efficiency of actually getting that heat out of the core, they're not very good at it. So the heat will go in and it won't come back out. So you can make one pole, heats up the core. Let's say you're going around a road course, you make a pole down the back straight, go around, go around a turn and come back on the next straight. You're still, you haven't rejected that heat. So that was one of our main objectives to be able to, the heat rejection, that's why we're measuring the water in, water out to make sure the heat's actually coming out. I don't want to say it's the best, but I want to say it's the best because I've not seen an air to water intercooler perform as well as these have. Sorry, Mikhail, we're sending this thing. <laughs>
weighed at 115. <laughs> Look at the 60 foot. Uh, Jake, we might turn it up or just pull it right back around. I mean, the planes are pretty long. Yeah. So, we're gonna take stop up so we can just get some more launch. There's a lot of cues here. Well, in my opinion? Yeah. Dude. There's quite a few. I think the last day of the track was open last year, the only other queue that was here was John, John LeBounty, which he's actually here again today. Mm. He loves racing his car. But yeah, there, dude, there's. Whole There's at least six or seven here. Six or seven. That's really good to see the platform evolve, though. Just reset the world record, yep. which is awesome. Unfortunately, we had the issue of the eighth mile time. Yeah, they still set up. The junior dragsters ran right before us, yeah. and those only run eighth miles, so they don't record anything past that. Um, and yeah, they never changed the clocks over, <laughs> so it only showed eighth. But looking at the the slip, we're about five hundredths faster to the eighth, and it was it was like. 700s fast, faster to the 60, 500s faster to 8th. I mean, there's a possibility that slip would have shown a 949 yeah. or 9480. But. That would have been crazy. This wasn't like a faked run, like no. Mikhail says that people are talking, like, oh, well, that car's only good on draggy. Well, just took it at a track. Okay. We posted a 963. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, it only makes good draggy runs. Well, Something along those lines. Mikhail, what's, 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 what's interesting is the car still idles like stock, doesn't smoke at all. Yeah. Which is weird, you know, I thought they're supposed to smoke when you're on 35 pounds. <laughs> All right, everybody, that does it with Mikhail's Q50. New world record. That's super exciting. 953 at 144 miles an hour. Really sucks that we had that issue. What? That, that's, I think, what I said. Wait, who had the world record before? Uh, oh. <laughs> Words can't explain just how impressive this car has been. Huge shout out to these two, because these guys have been doing a lot of the work on this car, helping out with Mikhail. I mean, Mikhail's done quite a bit. You guys have done a whole bunch. This is literally out of my two-car garage on my, on my barn. You know, out of my barn, and there's a farm field next to my house. And... Dude, it's great. <laughs> Once again, still the world leader Come back in the Q platform. You get a little more sunlight, a little more temperature in the track. Oh, I, yeah. It just kept going away further away. We kept taking launch control out of it. Everybody was going slower. Everybody was blowing tires off. Yeah, it was not like the best possible conditions that we could have had, but... No, I mean, it was a good DA, though. Yeah. I like DA. Yeah. 